Hey, how's it going? This is Jeremy Smith with Art Design Labs, and today I thought I'd go over a quick tip on how to import a SketchUp model into Revit, into the massing interface so that you can apply roofs and walls to it and use it as a reference to start designing your building. Um, so let's dig right in here. Uh, let's say you have a SketchUp model. Um, here's one I did very quickly. I'm actually not a really good SketchUp modeler, but um, <laughs> People have asked me the question of how to import it into Revit, so I figured I'd learn how to do it. Um, but for those who aren't really comfortable with the, the new app, the new massing interface, or they just prefer to use SketchUp for massing, um, it is quite quick and you can easily mass what you want in SketchUp very quickly. And if it's what you're comfortable with, then that's fine. I'd mass it here and then bring that in and, and use that as a reference for your walls and your roofs and things of that nature. So. So anyway, so you've done your SketchUp model. Here's my generic one I've just created. So you're just going to save it. File save as. Typically, I'll save it as an older version of SketchUp. Um, sometimes there's quirks with the newest version of SketchUp when you import it, but it doesn't really matter. You can choose any one you want to. I'm just going to save it as SketchUp 5, and I'm going to call it Building. Building starts with a B, not a G. Building. All right, and let's save it to my desktop. That's really matter. And I'm going to open up my Revit file. So I just started a new project. And now the important thing to remember when importing a SketchUp model is you can't just simply go to insert, you know, Lean Cat and bring it in. You actually have to start it. You actually have to start a mask first. So you, have, so you want to go to your masking site, in place mask. Make sure you do this first before you import the mask or you won't actually be able to edit it. M many times people will just import the mask and then try to start applying walls and, and things of that nature to it, but it won't work. You have to first go to Massey Insight, in place mask. Or if you're using 2008, you want to go to your modify, create mask first. And then name it what you want to. Now, now go and import the, uh, the SketchUp model. So I'm going to bring it back to 2010. So, all right, you went to Massey Insight, show mask automatically turned on. You want to do an in place mask. Mass, name what you want to. It's really matter. Building. Okay. Now that I'm in here, what I want to do is I want to go to insert. I'm going to say link. You can do link or you can do import. I think they pretty much do about the same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to go to link. Let's say link CAD. And CAD is not only CAD documents, it actually gives you other options here as well, such as .sat files and SketchUp files. So I'm going to go to SketchUp. And then we're going to find the file we just saved. I think I called it building. Yeah, there it is. I'm just going to say open. It's going to bring that in. There it is. Now we can move that into place here, wherever you want to. Now once you're done importing it, you can say finish mass. So now that object became a mass. And not just a generic object in, in, in the model. It actually becomes actual mass that you can actually manipulate. Well, not manipulate, but you can actually um, apply walls and roofs and things of that nature too. So once we have that in there, now we actually have the option of going to our massing in sight and doing all the options we have with any other mass in, in the model by face tab. We can say roof, choose the type of roof you want, and you can say these walls need to be roofs. And go ahead and say create roof and create that roof for you. Then you can go into mask in sight, model by face, curtain system, place that on these faces. Oops. Place that on these these faces. Create system, and now you have those. And now all you have to do is turn off that mask, and you'll see your walls that were created off of that mask. Now, because it's linked, we can actually go back to our SketchUp file, and let's say we raise this up a bit, bring this out some. Um, drag this out some more, make it a little bit bigger. And then we say file save. We can now go back to our Revit file, and we can, let's turn the mask back on, show mask, and we can actually go to our Manage tab and say Manage Links, and we can click that one and say Reload, and hit OK. It'll reload the new one we just said, the new one we just edited. So now it's a lot wider here, has been pushed back, or this has been pushed up. And if you haven't changed the geometry too much, you can often simply choose the faces you've already created and say update to face. 
this one is not going to work exactly because it was pushed out too much. Many times with, with the SketchUp link, it's not going to be able to update the faces as, as readily as it would be if you actually created the mask in Revit. So there are some disadvantages to using SketchUp mask versus one created in Revit. I would suggest creating the mask in Revit if you can, but if you've already created some complex uh, shape in SketchUp and you wanted to use that one, that's fine as well. But what it's going to ask you to do is you're just going to have to recreate that whole system because it's not going to be able to recognize it. So just this roof, I said, if I try to update to face, yeah, it's not going to let me. So, so it's not as seamless as you would think. The SketchUp one is not. So I would still say model it in uh, Revit as much as you can versus a SketchUp. But if you have a SketchUp model you want to use, you, you can do that. It's just you don't want to be changing it too much. You want to keep it the way it was from the beginning. So, but that's how you do it. So, uh, so if there's any questions or any comments, please let us know. Once again, we appreciate your questions and comments. So keep them coming, and uh, see you next time.